periodically, but not often, we see customers that may experience what's called a, a file header corruption. And what happens is when you go to open that data file in Hoboware, we're using the free version of Hoboware here, you get a message that is something like this, where it says open file header, could not open the file, it says invalid header prefix, prefix detected, etc. I want to talk briefly about what a file header is and how you can get your data off your logger so that um, and get it to onset so we can repair that file or at least attempt to repair that file. I have a pendant data logger attached to my computer. I have Hoboware, the free version, open. And I'm going to go into the launch screen and just show you what the file header um, contains. So when you create, when you configure a logger, you configure it in the launch window. The name you give it, so the name of your deployment, serial number, deployment number, what channels are selected. Again, here this is just a temperature logger, but if you had multiple channels, what channels are selected would be put in the file header. Also, if you put a label in there, uh, if you had alarms or filters configured, depending on the logger, again, the logger model, what your logging interval is set to and when, uh, how you had it start. If, it's, if it was immediate, it was on interval or at a future time and date. So when you click start, this data, this information is written into that file header, the top of that data file, and then the logger begins to record data. If there's a communication interruption during uh, the when we click on start, and you'll see that status bar, if there is a interruption in that conversation, if you will, between Hobleware and the data logger, that file could become corrupted or that header could be corrupted. Typically, header corruption does not affect the data, although it could, uh, depending on the nature of the corruption. Things that can cause those kind of interruptions in communications, um, it manifests itself more with optic type loggers. If the optics are dirty, if they're, if uh, like on the pendant logger, the optics, it communicates through the case. Um, there's a there's a little uh, there's two little LEDs you see in their infrared LEDs and if the case gets damaged if it gets scratched if it those are impeded in any way you could get a, a header corruption also you want to make sure that your optic device and your logger are firmly mated to each other so here we see the 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 base station also it would be the same with the waterproof shuttle. Here's the, the coupler, and here's an optic logger. This is a U-22. So when you mate these together, you want to make sure that the coupler is on as far as it will go onto that base station or shuttle, and that the logger is firmly seated and correctly oriented into that coupler. This is really important for pendants, especially because they use a different set of optics that are not on the end of the base station or shuttle are actually on the side so you need to make sure that coupler is on as tight as it will go and you may even have to push it against the side of your desk just to make sure that it's on there all the way if you get that file header error message you want to uh, use a utility called the force offload and it's available in Hoboware and Hoboware Pro under the device menu device utilities force offload USB logger or force offload serial logger. This is a USB logger, so we're going to select that. And basically what happens is Hoboware goes and offloads that data and does not re try to read the header at all. Typically Hoboware, when you read out a data file, Hoboware reads the file header so that it can plot the data. The force offload feature does not do that. So you end up with a file called force offload dot hobo. I already have a force offload hobo on my desktop so that's why it put the zero here. Once you get the file you will not be able to open it so in other words if uh, if, it, if it is truly corrupt you're not going to be able to, to open that file but you can save it 
and you can send it to onset. Once you have the data off the data logger, you want to make sure to relaunch that logger to write a new header. You need to relaunch it directly from Hoboware. So again, I'm not going to cancel out of that, not save it. Go back into the device and launch menu and launch that logger and it will rewrite that header with all of this information in it. If this was a logger that was retrieved from the waterproof shuttle, and so if you're using the waterproof shuttle in the field, the shuttle always relaunches the logger with the same configuration as before. The shuttle does not have the ability to rewrite an entire new header. So if you have a corrupt uh, file, a corrupt header in a file in the field, that you've offloaded with a shuttle, you need to get that logger relaunched from Hoboware directly in order to fix that file corruption or it will keep showing up because the shuttle alone cannot fix a header. It cannot rewrite a header. You can only do that from Hoboware. Once you have that force offload file saved, go to our website. Here is our, our website, onsetcomp.com. Click on uh, you can see contact. I'm just hovering over contact and you see tech support. Click on the tech support tab and you will get a form to fill out. Put in all your information and then here under file attachment, choose file, choose that forceoffload.hobo file and click on upload. That will be sent to us and we will do our best to recover your data by fixing that file header.